more than 1,000 people attended an interfaith service for the victims of the Chattanooga shooting. Members of Chattanooga's Muslim community sat among the crowd at the Baptist Church tonight. Christian pastors prayed for healing and for peace, and Rabbi read from the scriptures there as well. Governor Bill Haslam said that he prays that Chattanooga will be a city that answers hate with love. Flowers and flags are being placed at the site where the four Marines died. Some of them survived war zones only to be gunned down on their home soil in an act of domestic terrorism. Their bodies were taken to Dover Air Force Base today to prepare for their final honors. The convoy made its way from Tennessee to Virginia with a police escort. And once in Virginia, they were placed on a military helicopter for the final leg of the journey to Delaware. A fifth victim, 26-year-old Navy Specialist Randall Smith, was shot three times. He remains hospitalized right now in critical condition. He grew up in the northwest Ohio city of Paulding near the Indiana state line. The man who opened fire in Chattanooga, killing the Marines, was armed with multiple weapons, and the FBI says he purchased some of them illegally. Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz was also wearing a vest that helped him carry multiple weapons and ammunition. Counterterrorism investigators are combing through the online activity of Abdulaziz and checking his foreign travel to try and come up with a motive. While the investigation moves forward, authorities say the carnage could have been much worse if not for some quick thinking officers. What I can tell you is that the injured officer and his teammates rushed into harm's way and confronted an armed, aggressive, and brutal assailant, and their actions most certainly prevented further loss of life and further harm in our community. We obviously want to know what his thoughts were and or who else he was associating with at the time. We have no indication that he was inspired by or directed by anyone other than himself. Some of the weapons he bought were legal as well. Mohammed Abdulaziz failed a background check back in 2013, was let go from his job as an engineer at a nuclear plant north of Cleveland. He spent 10 days at the plant before being let go from First Energy Corporation. A spokesman wouldn't say why Abdulaziz didn't pass that screening process. He worked in an administrative building and was never allowed in the protected area of the plant near the reactor. Employees recognized his picture after the shooting.